All right, it's time for the next video. Here we go. This video is all about becoming the authority. This is called authority positioning. So you may think of it as an expert, um, a guide, uh, a guru, although <laughs> sometimes the guru thing gets a little weird, right? Let's be honest. But I think an authority and what's called authority positioning is probably a better way to look at it because think about the people that you respect, probably, I would think so, who have an authority positioning. It would be um, a doctor and uh, probably a lawyer. And of course, there are good and bad in all these, but you get what I'm saying here. They, they have authority, um, a financial planner, an accountant, uh, a, uh, a rocket scientist, a, uh, an astronaut, they have authority because of their positioning and what they do and also how challenging it is for other people to match what they're doing creates authority. Now, you can create authority with actual authority by be literally becoming one of the most authoritative people on in your topic in the world. And that's what I want you to strive to do. That's why continuing education, earning more credentials, and reading more and learning more all the time is so critical. It's not a matter of faking it till you make it. Uh, I don't believe in that. However, you do need to position yourself as an authority and then always strive for additional excellence as an authority. The good news is, is uh, you're probably familiar with the term an expert witness, you know, like in a courtroom. And essentially, by legal definition, it's someone in the courtroom that has more expertise, authority, knowledge, skills, or education than the other people in the courtroom. Uh, that would make someone an expert witness in, in a court case. But although you can get become a certified expert witness and have different levels of that and, and things of that nature. Uh, but that is done through credentialing, experience, and so forth. But you can become an authority by positioning yourself as an authority. So some of it is through creative marketing, branding, photography, association, all those sorts of things. That's what we're gonna get into. And some of it is by actually becoming a world-renowned authority by becoming the most intelligent, well-read, well-respected, well-noted um, person in your space. So this is all about authority positioning. One thing that will allow you to become an authority is to focus on a single niche and or niche, whatever you want to call it. I can tell you that this has been a personal challenge of mine, and here's why. Because if you've seen all the programs that we offer, and if you've been to my website, if you haven't yet, go to johnspencerellis.com. I have gotten much better over the years at narrowing down my niche, but my personal challenge is that I have a lot of interest in a lot of different things. I also have a wide range of education, formal, informal, online, physical, uh, uh, traditional academia, and definitely a lot of non-traditional academia. And so for me, my challenge and for me, gaining authority has been to focus on a niche. Uh, and now it is developing careers of trainers and coaches. That's really where my expertise is. Um, but it's I, I'm sharing this with you in full transparency. And also, it's a good lesson for you. The more you can focus on a narrow niche, you can become a major celebrity in that niche. I mean, literally, it could be fly fishing. Uh, it could be whitewater rafting. It could be uh, professional speaking. It could be about kettlebells. It could be uh, about um, men after divorce. I mean, literally, it could be anything. But if you are the go-to person, if that's all you do, if that's all you talk about, pretty soon by default, because no one else is doing what you're doing, you gain that expert authority positioning. And that allows you to it makes your advertising more effective. It makes your marketing more cost effective. Uh, it makes people watch your videos more. And it also allows you to charge a premium for your services because you are the go-to expert. Of course, you're going to gain knowledge over time because you're doing more of it. You also need to back it up by learning more and reading more and gaining additional credentials and speaking on the topic more and listening to others speak on the topic more and being a podcast guest and hosting podcasts and you know going to conventions, seminars, workshops, retreats, whatever you wanna call it, continue your education so you can become that expert in that niche. So as I've gotten older and I've done this longer, I have narrowed down my focus a lot. I should have done it earlier. And so I'm sharing this with you so you don't go down that same path I did of 
trying to be pretty good at about 20 different things instead of a master of one or two things. And now I have narrowed it down, narrowed it down, narrowed it down. And because of that, I'm having greater levels of success. It also makes it easier to become successful, uh, which I, I, hopefully that makes sense. But it really is true that if you're not trying to chase a bunch of different things and you focus in on one, maybe two things, and if those two things are complementary and synergistic, it also makes it easier. So focus on a niche so you can become that authority person in that niche. It should be something you're passionate about. Now, some people can be passionate about things that do not make them a lot of money, and they're passionate about helping people who do not have the resources to pay for their service. You know, you can be passionate about a charity cause or philanthropy. That's super important, and I think that's great that we all give back. And you also need to make sure that you can pay your bills and put food on the table and take care of you and your family. So if your entire focus is to go help others, but you can't help yourself first, you can't give what you don't have. So you need to focus on building your business first by gaining authority, drilling down in a niche, and then growing and helping others secondarily. Again, later in the program in the Online Expert Empire segment, we go into this in extensive detail. This is an overview, but I want you to get the wheels spinning right now. The more you niche down, the greater it is to become an expert in that niche. You also need to choose the right channels. Now, I've heard a lot of people talk about this. And yes, you need to be what's called omnipresent, which basically means that you are everywhere. But you can have a team of people who can help you. Like, can you imagine if you try to be really good at blogging and then syndicating your blog and then really good at being a YouTube influencer and then really good on Facebook and then Instagram and Messenger and LinkedIn and Twitter and you know all these other things. How, how are you going to master all of them? What you need to do, and, and that's part of this program in the training, is you learn the fundamentals. And, and also, we teach you a lot of the advanced skills as well. Learn what you like best. Learn what you do best. Learn what is a natural fit for how you like to disseminate your message. You master that. And you allow different team members that you can outsource to. And we talk about that in the program as well. And allow them to do the other things. And it doesn't cost a lot of money. It really, really doesn't. And you don't have to do this all at once. So I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. Just continually add. Figure out what is best now. What is the easiest now? What is the fastest now? Grow. Expand. Learn. Polish. And then move into other channels. But allow who uh, your team members outsource virtual or otherwise to handle a lot of the other things you personally are more active and interactive on one or two platforms that you know best serve you best that you feel you can make the most impact with very very important and that will help your expert authority positioning here's the other thing that's super important provide real value a lot of people want to sell the sizzle and there's no steak you know you you seen a program before and it's you know hey get this and it's great and we have all these things for you and then you get the program and it was a big hypey sales pitch and there's no substance to the program that doesn't serve you it doesn't serve anyone else it's not a good way to do business and that is the surefire rapid approach to ultimate failure in any business and specifically as an online coach expert or consultant so when you're adding value give your best stuff give your best information um, be involved and care. If you care more than others care, you will do better. If you can give a little bit more than other people think is wise, you will do better. If you can dig a little deeper to add more value, you will do better than most people because most people aren't willing to do that. And it makes it very easy for you to come up with a winning solution to serve your clients and, and also, they will evangelize on your behalf that you are the expert and the authority, and that helps your positioning as well. That's called third-party credibility or social proof. And also, think about this from a relationship perspective. You have to be consistent for your authority. What if someone is inconsistent in your relationship, regardless of what kind of relationship you have? If they're inconsistent, uh, you may not trust them in that relationship. Well, what if someone's inconsistent in their relationship as an authority for you? then you don't trust them. So if you're inconsistent in your approach, in your value, in your messaging, uh, people are gonna say, well, you know, they used to do this and now they don't. Or they said this before, but now they're totally contradicting themselves. Or they are wishy-washy on you know, this point of perspective. 
be definitive, be clear, be concise, and be consistent with your messaging. You know, if it's every Monday, do it every Monday. If it's three times a week, do it three times a week. If it's on Facebook, do it on Facebook. If you do an email every Wednesday, then darn it, do an email every Wednesday and don't skip it. Consistency over time wins. It, with many athletes, consistency over time will beat out pure talent because a lot of times with people with pure talent don't think they have to be consistent and over time they will be less consistent and then overall uh, less talented and people who have a strong work ethic and show consistency over time will do better. The same is true for your business. Engage your community. And again, in this program, you're going to go over all the different communities, all the different ways to communicate with them. But engage your community. Ask questions. Be thought-provoking. Be irreverent at times. Um, poll them. There's different ways to do polls on uh, Twitter and Facebook groups and uh, on fan pages. And you can do it in your emails. You can use things like SurveyMonkey, which they have a, a, a free program, I believe. I, I have a paid program. I pay a couple hundred dollars a year, and it has all types of different analytics and things like that. It's called SurveyMonkey.com. It's really, really a great service. You don't need it, but it's something that you can use, surveymonkey.com. Uh, so engage your community. And also you may want to have a, a name for your community. Do you call them you know, your tribe, your family, your lifers? You know, like, I, I don't know. You come up with some name, and they also, that's, uh, they'll have more of an affinity towards you and the group if they have a name because now they can belong to something greater than themselves and something greater than perhaps just the individual as well but engage them on a continual, regular basis to gain authority because then they're always going to seek you out and look to you for that guidance because of your engagement. And build relationships with experts and influencers. You know, it's not just about taking the selfie. Um, that is called social proof or uh, borrowing celebrity or brand cuddling. All those things are true. But you need to build real relationships with experts and influencers. And don't make it phony when you're trying to do that. How can I add value? You know, it's like, yes, you should add value. But sometimes it's contrived or you don't even know the person. You're like, well, how can I serve you? And they're thinking, all right, come on. I know you're up to something. Don't do that. Just be nice. Be kind. Um, you can be brief and compliment them on their work. And smile and Learn something, ask thought-provoking questions, and have a sincere relationship. So you're going to have authority and expertise and influence transfer from them to you through these relationships. And some of the best ways to do this is at live events. You know, A lot of people do this at my penthouse group uh, mastermind portion of our coaching program. It's penthousegroup.net if you want to see how I do that. It's all online. It's all online coaching and, except we meet at my penthouse three times a year in Las Vegas. Penthousegroup.net You'll see we take a lot of pictures together. We have a lot of fun. Uh, we share ideas. We do Facebook Lives together. Uh, but no one's there with a specific agenda to go, I need to extract this from this expert. That is the wrong approach, and you will absolutely fail. Not even fail slowly. You will fail fast and fall flat on your face. A lot of Fs. <laughs> be cautious and conscientious. Add value. Be kind. Smile. Engage. Ask interesting questions. And I learned this from my friend Michael O'Neill, who's one of the top podcast hosts in the world. He hosts the Solo Hour. He's, he, he always says it's important not just to be interesting, but to be interested. And I think that's brilliant how he said that. Be interested in what other people are doing and saying and what they think. Don't just try to be interesting and irreverent and memorable, although that's good. You first need to show you care so people will then, in return, care about what you have to do and be interested and interesting. And that's how you build uh, authority. One other way. One more thing here. Here's a bonus. To build authority, you can accelerate when others slow down. What do I mean? Well, at the time that I am making this video for you, it's uh, a weekend. And a lot of other people have slowed down. Now, that doesn't mean I won't enjoy the rest of the weekend, but I decided to get ahead because this needed to be done because I wanted to do this for you. Some pe sometimes people say, well, you know, I'll get to it later. Or everyone else is taking a day off. Or it's a national holiday. Or it's this or it's that. 
you're probably a nonconformist. That's why you're going through this program. Simply because other people slow down or the mass of humanity does one thing. Well, the mass of humanity, you know, it's statistically, if you look at things statistically, historically, and mathematically, and that's the way I prefer to look at things most often, I'm very pragmatic, is that the vast majority of people are not totally satisfied with their life. The vast majority or the, the, the majority of people uh, get a divorce. The majority of people are overweight. The majority of people, and this, and statistically, this is all true, um, uh, don't like their jobs. I think it's like like eighty five percent. It's in the last Pew uh, Research poll. Crazy. So why would you want to follow the norm if 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 those statistics are true? And most people don't uh, go on holiday or vacation as much as they can or should, and sometimes as much as they're allowed to by their employer, especially in the United States. So why would you follow what other people do when they slow down? Most people are dissatisfied and feel incomplete and don't live their ideal life. So don't worry about other people slowing down. You go, well, they did, so I might as well. Sometimes you can accelerate and slow down. It just puts you further ahead and it allows you to gain even more authority because you're doing more when everyone else is uh, ebbing. Um, and you stand out because you're the only one kicking butt. There's no other way to say it, right? I could cuss, I guess, but you get the point. When everyone else is ebbing, you flow. When everyone else is quitting, you accelerate. When everyone turns the dial down, you turn it up. And it makes it very, very easy for you to be a standout and to gain authority positioning. There you go. All right, that concludes this lesson. Brief and to the point, thank you so much. If you haven't taken some notes, pause this before you go on to the next one. Take some notes here and realize that uh, authority positioning is a strategic endeavor. It doesn't happen by chance. It's not that someone got lucky. That doesn't exist. It's through hard work, diligence, strategic thinking, leveraging time, opportunity, and technology. All right. Thanks a lot.